Notre Dame student athletes, Bonzi Colson, Matt Farrell, Steve Astoria. Gentlemen, good to have you here. Um, same format as we've used the last couple days. Please raise your hand. We'll get a microphone to you. Please state your name and affiliation. And if you can, direct the question to who you'd like to answer up here on the dais. So go ahead and get started. Bucky Gleason, uh, Buffalo News. Matt, uh, the other day, Mike Gray said that you were better than Bobby Hurley. Uh, kind of chuckled even just now. Can you, what was your response to that? Uh, how do you take that praise? Um, it's kind of crazy to hear from me. You know, that's, uh, the Hurleys are unbelievable uh, coaches. He's an unbelievable coach. He was an unbelievable player. So I take it as a huge compliment. Um, I don't know if he's right. But uh, I'll obviously strive to be, uh, try to be better than him or uh, try to be even as good as him. But he was an unbelievable player and he's an unbelievable coach now. So uh, this is Coach Bray, uh, you know, kind of relaying the relationship that me and him have. So I take it as a huge compliment. And this is also for you, Matt. Uh, John Worrell with the Associated Press. How have you made the adjustment to uh, being a starter this season and, and the fact that you've been efficient with, with the ball, what, what have you kept in mind this year as you've helped lead this team to this point? Just uh, maintaining the same confidence you know, that I played with when I, when I first got my uh, start in the NCAA tournament last year, just uh, playing the same way I do, um, sticking to what I know, and then playing with these guys around me really helps, you know, playing with the guys that you know, I really want to play for, and I think that makes a huge difference. You know, we got guys that want to play for each other, and uh, they make me better on the floor. Um, and just the culture of this program, you know, it, it kind of all worked out. So I just it was all good vibes, you know, going forward. So I just maintaining that confidence and uh, trusting the system and trusting the guys around me. Follow up, John. And just as a follow up, Matt, as well as you played um, during, during, especially during that one stretch in the middle of the second half yesterday with the steal, the, the feed, and in the three-point basket, you were visibly disappointed as you were walking off the floor um, after, I guess, you know, the, the, you know, missing a couple of shots there in the final 25 seconds. How do you use that to fuel yourself moving forward? You guys won, and maybe you, you weren't at your best in, in some ways. Yeah, uh, personally, you know, I feel like I got to be better down the stretch. Um, take that hard, you know, I got I to gotta make that free throw and I got to make better decisions down there. And I don't think if I was upset because, you know, we won. So I'll always be happy we won, but these guys picked me up. Um, doing that all year, uh, we do that for each other. But just use that as motivation, try to get better the next day. You know, that's, that's the good thing about basketball, man. There's always another game, as long as you keep winning. You go all the way in the back. Justin Jackson with the Dominion Post. I have a question for Matt again. Uh, uh, two questions. Uh, one, uh, it's, it's, it's kind of assumed that today's college players are, are uh, impatient when it comes to playing time. So I'm kind of wondering, how did you find the patience uh, to stick it out uh, with, uh, with Grant and Jackson in front of you when you first got to school? And uh, question number two, uh, uh, what have you seen with uh, West Virginia's Javon Carter, and, and how do you guys think uh, you know, that matchup at battling point guards will play out tomorrow? Yeah, I think, um, you know, as I mentioned before, the culture, uh, you know, guys in the past have, haven't been able to play right away in this program. They wait their turn. Um, and fortunately for me, I was able to develop a good relationship with Demetrius. So, you know, he was always in my ear uh, telling me to keep working hard. And like I said before, it, it, it's hard to do that. You know, anybody that's been in that situation, you know, not playing, and it's a hard thing to, uh, to grasp every day. But like I said before, these guys around me, uh, being around them every day, that, that really does help. And it's just a matter of being patient, like you said, and just keep working hard. And um, if you do the right thing, you know, you get an opportunity. And got my opportunity, and I just try to do what I do, and I try to play. And as for West Virginia, um, we know what they do. Um, it's going to be a fun game. It's going to be fast-paced. Um, their guards are really good. Their bigs are really good. So it's going to be a, another fun game in March. Let's go, Dana. Uh, Dana O'Neill with ESPN. Bonzi, how much has a chronic conversation about what you aren't because of your size fueled you through the entirety of your career? Um, I'll just say being motivated, um, being motivated to do what I can do, um, you know, to help us succeed as possible, trying to lead by example on and off the court. And, you know, just use, you know, what they say as a motivation. You know, our team, we're focused in on what we can do and how we can be better. I think that's something that is within our program. We don't really worry about what other people say. 
we lock in and um, we know what we can do um, to win games. Is there anyone that helped you believe that it doesn't matter what mold you fit, you're, you can just play? Yeah, I think growing up, my father was a huge example of, you know, always being there for me and just motivating me to be the best player as possible. And then coming here, having a great coaching staff, having great, you know, brothers and teammates who um, just push me to be the best player I can be and learning from guys, from former leaders, um, former captains of how to lead on and off the court is something that has really, um, you know, helped, our, helped me to be the, a good uh, captain and leader. Go to Mark first, then over here. Yeah, some questions. Just maybe we'll start with Steve on the matchup. Obviously, they're the number one turnover forcing team in the nation. What do you see when you watch them? Yeah, they do a great job of you know forcing people to get out of their comfort zone. I think um, their defense creates and turns into their offense, and that's something that they're really known for. I think the way we play, we do a great job handling the ball. To credit to you know Maddie and our guards who. Um, make great decisions. So for us, I think the challenge is just going to be making sure uh, making the right decisions and not rushing. And I think that's something that uh, we've been very good at all season long. So just uh, taking our time, making the right decisions, and um, I think we'll be able to get some good shots. And then Matt, you're going to be in the middle of that. Have you ever faced a defense like this? Yeah, you know, we've kind of compared them to Florida State a little bit, um, being in the passing lanes. Um, <laughs> Contesting you, you know, full court pressure. Um, I think theirs is a little, little more different. It's a little more uh, havoc, I would say, or reckless. You know, you got guys everywhere. So we just need to stay poised with the ball. Uh, we need guys to be receivers. Everybody that's on the floor needs to be a receiver, um, and we need to be strong with the ball. And then, Bonzi, if you comment, like maybe if you have what, um, you know, what allows you guys, I mean, one team made 40 turnovers. You haven't made 40 turnovers like in the last six games combined. Uh, you know, what do you think allows you guys to have so few turnovers? Yeah, I just think, you know, um, within our program, that's something that we like to do. We like to, you know, not turn over the ball, be strong with the ball. And I think, you know, playing teams like Florida State, Louisville has really helped us prepare for games like this where they press, they deny to the perimeter. I think, you know, playing those ACC games really, um, and to help us to play the games like this. Let's go uh, Josh first, and then we'll go in the center here. Uh, Steve, Josh Verlin, City of Basketball Love. Um, what lessons as a team do you feel like you guys have taken away from the Elite Eight runs the last two years? And then personally, how do you feel like your, if at all, your mental approach has changed this being your senior year? Yeah, I think the, obviously the last two years, you know, having that experience has helped us a lot. I think you saw yesterday, um, you know, first round, close game and uh, you know we were pretty poised and we've been in those situations before and I think those two losses in the Elite Eight you know drives this team especially since the end of last year you know us three who were up here um, you know the guys in the locker room knows what it felt like to lose and um, you know that's kind of pushed us this year to t try to take it a step further um, and I think we just have to continue to take it one game at a time. <laughs> Yeah, I think I'm just trying to enjoy it and, uh, you know, soak up all the experience of the NCAA tournament. Um, you know, I've been lucky enough to, you know, be here for the, p the past three years. Um, you know, Coach Bray always talks about not taking it for granted. You know, not everybody gets the opportunity to play in the tournament. And, um, you know, we've we've had a couple good runs. And I think, uh, you know, this team, it's it's been a great season. We've had a lot of huge wins. And uh, I just want to continue to play as long as I can. And, uh, you know, that starts with tomorrow and trying to uh, get to the next round. Back left, John. Jonah Javada with WGRZ here in Buffalo. Um, Matt, how would you describe Thursday's crowd in terms of Irish support? We love our fans. You know, we, we feel like we got the best fans. Um, the crowd started piling up. You know, I think in the second half, a lot of Princeton, a lot of West Virginia got uh, people. So I'm sure a lot of people in the stands were pulling for the upset. But you know, we love our crowds. Um, they always travel well. Um, they're always really supportive and. Um, there's been a couple games, you know, where, where we played in Greensboro for the, the ACC tournament and the whole place was blue and then we have our little spot behind the bench and, and they're just as loud. So we appreciate, you know, everything that they do and uh, they know that we know that, uh, that we appreciate it. And uh, Bonzi, how typical or common is it? I mean, with a team like Notre Dame, sometimes it's like the Yankees, there are fans seemingly everywhere all over the country. Uh, how common is that when you guys go play road games and neutral side games that there's a large Irish contingent. Yeah, like Matt said, we love the fans. We feed off the fans' energy um, during the game. And it's great, 
you know, when we're coming, getting ready for the game, heading to the bus, and the band's playing um, our fight song, and fans are coming, cheering you on, clapping, and I think that really just gets us motivated and, and um, gives us a lot of energy to play well. You know, we play for our family, we play for the fans, the uh, university, so it just uh, helps us play with that edge. Right in the center, name and affiliation, please. Uh, Mark Tra Mark Tracy from the New York Times. I was just in your locker room. There's a TV in there. And guess what it's uh, tuned into. I'm wondering if, amidst obviously all your preparation for games and the games themselves, if you're also able to be fans of of March Madness, and if it's you know like like us, like most of the people watching, if it's if it's a cool annual event to you guys beyond the fact that obviously you get to play in it. Yeah, I mean this is something that we've all been watching. I think our whole lives. You know, we have a lot of friends. From AU teams and friends that we've gone up playing in these games, you know, we're texting each other, we're talking about the game, seeing when they play, trying to tune in. So this is just a great, you know, environment and great culture for all the basketball. Um, just watching games, you know, um, relating to it, just watching different experiences, learning from the game, and I think it's something that really helps us bring the culture together. Yeah, I think it's all part of, you know, just being in the tournament and that experience. You know, you get to watch these other games. You get to see all the uh, these crazy games with the buzzer beaters and stuff like that. And like Bonzi said, you know, a lot of us have friends uh, that are out here playing too. So we're always talking and seeing uh, how they're doing. So it's just a, it's a fun atmosphere. And, uh, you know, we, we do have the loosest coach in America. So, you know, we got TVs on. We, got, we, just, we just hang out and have a good time together. <laughs> Go ahead. Mark Herman, <laughs> Newsday in New York. I, I want to follow up on that for, for Bonzi and, and all, all of you. That what impressions do you have of the tournament so far? Are there common themes? What, what has struck you when you watch these games? Yeah, I think all the games are, are great. Um, just tuning in, walking in, watching them, just enjoying the game, um, not taking it for granted. The games have been fun. You know, hasn't really been any upsets. Um, I don't think. I mean, we just lock, paying attention, just you know, watching the games. It's a, it's a tournament of champions, so it's, it's, it's obviously really fun to watch. Um, every team in this tournament is capable of winning games, so it's, it's just it's a fun time. It's a, it's, it's a time for basketball fans to, to just really enjoy and just sit down and watch it. Um, I think it's the greatest sporting event you know, that we have. It's, just, it's, it's a lot of fun to watch. Yeah, I would just say the one thing from watching yesterday is every single game is a close game. Um, you're not going to see many blowouts in this tournament. Uh, like Matt said, every team has had a heck of a regular season. They probably won their league, and uh, they're all coming down to the wire. I know yesterday we played early, so we got to watch um, pretty much the rest of the games for the day, which was cool, and uh, just to see guys hitting big shots, making plays, and um, especially guys in you know our conference who we've, we've played against all season long, and watching them go against other conferences, I think it's pretty fun. Time for a couple more. Let's start right back here. Mitch Bingle, the Charleston Gazette Mail. First, happy St. Patrick's Day to you guys. And Thank, you. <laughs> Thank you. I was just wondering, Bonzi, if you could talk about this matchup with West Virginia, first of all, as a team, and then second, individually, how you think of them. Yeah, I mean, they're a team that, you know, they're really defensively oriented. Uh, they press the whole game. Um, they defend. They, you know, they have some three-point shooters. They have drivers. So it's going to be a fun game. And, um, you know, I think going over there, Scott, we played, you know, we played teams like that who, um, can really defend and can really deny um, up to the perimeter. So I think it's something, you know, playing in the AC has really helped us. For myself, just sticking with what I do, um, trying to be the best rebound I, I can be out there, grabbing all the rebounds, um, just playing within myself, staying in character, um, and motivating my teammates as best as I can so, I can, so they can get the um, do things they want to do as well. I'm going to go down here to John and then go to Dana here in the center. I guess um, Steve. Steve, the, the fact that it is St. Patrick's Day and you guys are the Fighting Irish, is there anything that you guys do that's special to celebrate the day uh, or anything like that? Um, no, nah, not so not so far. I don't think. Maybe if um, you know we get a win and go back to South Bend and enjoy St. Patrick's Day <laughs> there, but um, you know nothing. Just try to enjoy the holiday. So it's just about everything's on hold right now. Yeah, yeah, you could say that. Let's go. Dana in the center and then back to Jonah. Uh, Matt, I just wonder if you can expand on the loosest coach in America. What makes Mike so loose? Uh, how about this? He, he comes into the locker room right after we get off the court and puts on a, a green hoodie and said he's got to get in St. Patrick's mode for the media. I mean, 
we got a we got a game tomorrow to go to the Sweet 16, and this guy's worrying about what he's wearing to for the media. So it's just a it's a it's an atmosphere, and he creates an environment where you know you just you're having fun, and you got guys that want to win and want to play for each other and want to play for the coaches, and I think that's really powerful. Okay, let's uh, wrap up with Jonah here. Um, what's your experience been like in Buffalo? Uh, granted, there's a large number of Irish fans here. It's a big St. Patrick's Day city. Have you guys had any weird experiences with uh, Buffalonians coming up to you, and whether it's words of encouragement or whatnot? Uh, there's a lot of snow here. It was a lot of snow, so I think uh, it's kind of similar to uh, South Bend. A lot of snow on the ground, um, but I mean, fans have been great here. We're enjoying it. Uh, we're not taking it for granted. We go into the hotel. There's cookies. There's snacks for us. We feel like we're home. Uh, you know, we're just having fun. We're enjoying it, and um, we're having a good time. You guys done anything fun, Steve? Uh, yeah, we went out to eat the first night we were here. It's probably one of the best, like steaks and lobster bisque that I ever had. Yeah. It was uh, Sears. 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 It was, uh, yeah, it was really good, and I think we're going to go grab some food tonight. And, um, yeah, so just trying to take it all in and enjoy the town. Guys, thanks very much. Thank you. Good luck tomorrow. <clears throat> okay, we're joined by uh, Notre Dame head coach Mike Bray. Uh, coach, uh, want to make an opening statement or you just want to go right to questions? Question. Right to questions. Sounds good. Uh, go ahead and raise your hand. We'll get a microphone to you. Let's, uh, we'll start over here with John and then we'll, we'll come over here on the far side. Mike, John Warrell with the AP. Um, well, you obviously did, did come out with a green pullover and happy St. Patrick's Day and what, you know, what is the feeling today being at St. Patrick's Day. And well, can we make this quick? I'm the honorary grand marshal of the parade in an hour. So, uh, you know, if I could get out of here, you know, I'm gonna, I gotta, you know, kiss babies and wave to people. The float I'm on, they say, is awesome. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> he, he was buying that. <laughs> No, it's awesome. No, you know, there's always a little buzz around our university and our place on St. Patrick's Day. There's no question about it. And uh, figured I'd break out the festive green for it. Um, you know, same, yeah, I'll say this. St. Patrick's Day is great when you're still alive in the NSA tournament. It sucks when you're not. <laughs> Let's go with the far side right here. And then we'll go to Dane in the center. Paul Gotham picking splinters. There was a stretch yesterday in the first half where you guys converted coming out of uh, timeouts on three or four and got what you wanted. There are a lot of experienced teams in America. Not everyone can execute to that level. Two part, what's it take? What's it like to have that ace? And what's it take to get to that point to get guys to do that? I, I think you have to have high basketball IQ guys and experience and veterans. And, and we're an older group. And we're an older group that has won together and we've won together in this tournament. So I think the concentration and focus level in Brooklyn was fabulous. And yesterday, even though it was not pretty offensively for us, I thought we were very locked in. Uh, but we did get some good stuff, especially post-ups for Bonzi uh, out of timeouts. We thought that was really good. And, you know, again, this group has played together a lot now, and they know who they are. I give them a lot of credit that they kind of figure it out in our motion and it's not maybe a specific play all the time. Let's go Dana in the center. Uh, Dana O'Neill with ESPN. Matt just termed you the loosest coach in America. And I'm just wondering if 
earlier in your career, you think anybody would have referred to you as that, or is that something that you've aged into? You know, I think, uh, Dana, I think I was uh, a little more uptight when I got out to South Bend in 2000, because I just was trying not to get fired. You know, you're trying to survive and build it, even though I would say this innerly, inwardly, I was more uptight. I think I've always tried to be on, you know, loose with our guys and not get them uptight. Um, of course, when you're a little more established, you can, you can really be loose. When you're, I have tenure now at Notre Dame, so I'm, <laughs> I'm really loose. <laughs> right in the center here, Mark. Uh, a similar, uh, uh, in a similar light, we have a rare confluence tomorrow of two coaches who don't wear ties facing each other. Uh, I think we know a lot of the, the backstory behind Coach Huggins' uh, decision there. Uh, but you kind of do it differently because you actually are dressed quite slickly but without a tie. And I know in the, your past you had a, another way of, uh, of dressing as well. And I was wondering if you could kind of take us through that and your current thinking. Well, I'm, you know, I was, uh, maybe I was the one that got the Mac turtleneck popular, you know, but that was my, my, my look. And when I got to Notre Dame, you know, first year, so God, you know, is he really think that through? Is that, I said, I was in the America East. It's a bus league. <laughs> It's, you wear a sweatshirt on the bus when you beat Boston University and you bus six hours. So it was comfortable. I stayed with it uh, until my daughter said, Dad, that's got to go. <laughs> that's out. That's got to go. Uh, but there's no way I can put the tie on. So you're right. Bob and I were kidding at the meeting the other day. said, uh, we run into each other, two guys not wearing ties. I don't know how the NSA feels about that, you know, and the whole decorum rule, if we'll get a fine or whatever. Thank go, you, Coach. Go right behind you there to Jonah. Hey, Mike. Jonah Javad with uh, WGRZ TV, fellow no tie wearer. Um, question about the uh, Irish fan base here in Buffalo. Uh, did it did it feel like a neutral site at all yesterday for you? Well, no, it didn't. I think you know this town is a good ND town. You know, I've you know over 17 years. You know, I've run into people from here that are big ND fans, whether they're alums or Subway alums. Um, I hope they can get out of jail, you know, by 8 a.m. tomorrow to come to our game because they're rolling today, I can tell you that much. <laughs> As a matter of fact, we have some extra bail money just to make sure we, we can get them out. We know what happens with the Irish on a day like today. But, um, uh, yeah, the, now the, the, it was. There's no question. In the second half yesterday, it felt like a road game. You know, West Virginia fans, Princeton fans are certainly, or uh, uh, Bucknell fans certainly cheering for Princeton, and that was kind of a road atmosphere in the ACC. We had to escape. I think we'll be well represented tomorrow, though. Uh, with your son from yeah. going to school around these parts, has he told you about how Buffalo does St. Patrick's Day parades, whatnot? He um, he did a little bit, but. The um, waitress work, uh, helping us this morning, I said, so is it big here? And she went on for like 10 minutes how it's unbelievable. So, you know, uh, it, I'm sure today starting at noon, right, the bar is open at noon and we're off and running. <laughs> Let's go to Dana here and then we've got a couple in the back. If we can get a microphone in the back. Mike, in an era when so many players are leaving early, I'm wondering if Villanova and even perhaps if you were to ever win a national championship of programs like yours, with experience are more equipped to repeat? You know, I, I think they are. And, you know, Jay and I's program, as you know, kind of built the same way with um, guys that grow up in the program and get older and aren't necessarily McDonald's All-Americans. I think it's a huge advantage. I think what it's done, you know, through the Big East and the ACC, we, we've been very consistent because we've never been too young. We've had guys growing up. We've had, I call it the junior year light bulb go on. Zach August, B.J. Beecham, guys that are with us for two years, Matt Farrell. You know, you throw them in there, and then as juniors, they're really ready to deliver for you. You know, I, I tell young coaches when they get the job, get old and stay old. You know, can you get a rhythm to your roster, whether you're redshirting, taking transfers, which we've done, to stay older really helps. Mike, back. Mike, you've got a long history with West Virginia from years gone by. Yeah. Just some of your memories, good, bad. You had a lot of success during some of those, those runs. We've had great games with West Virginia, and this is bringing back a lot of Big East memories all afternoon and night last night. I'm thinking about our games, certainly against John Beeline and when, since Bob has been there. And my best, my, I guess my memory is our, how hard the Mountaineer crowd is on us down there. 
It is one of the most brutal. I have heard some of the most unbelievable stuff. But what I do is I'll turn to my assistant and go, God, that was a good one. You know, I mean, he really ripped me on that one. No, they're, they're, they, it's been unbelievable down there. Great games, great battles. The last game I remember is, you know, we had that two seed with Ben Hansborough. We go down there and, and West Virginia beat us. And uh, Jerry West's son is a walk-on. He throws him in a game. He bangs down a three across from our bench. I say, we ain't winning today. <laughs> Forget it. Jerry West's son hit a three. It's over. Let's go home. Get ready for the next one. But just great matchups. Pit snoggle, ball screen, stepping back and shooting a three. Butler, uh, you know, through the years. Um, uh, there's, it, it, we played a lot. We played a lot of great games. A lot of great memories. All the way back, Justin. Coach uh, Justin Jackson with the Dominion Post. I was obviously, obviously interesting uh, the other day when you when you compared Matt with Bobby Hurley. I'm just kind of wondering what what uh, have you seen with West Virginia's Javon Carter, and how do you kind of see that matchup between him and Matt tomorrow? Well, here's let me let me. Matt Farrell is not better than Jerry West. <laughs> okay, I just want to be clear on that. I think it's a great matchup, and guess what? They played on an All Star team together this summer, the East Coast All Star. They know each other. They were over in. I believe Italy. So they're kind of buddies, and they went after each other in practice. It's a great matchup. Carter is a heck of a guard, and he's a winner. He's a big shot taker, and he's a big shot maker. Heck of a defender. That's a great matchup at the point. We get a couple questions over here. Let's start with Mark closest. Hi, Mike. Mark Herman from Newsday in New York. Uh, it seems like the, the players are so phenomenal in shooting threes these days. How has that evolved since you started coaching? Yeah, it's an amazing weapon now, and almost all of us really use it. You know, I guess a great example is you have a three-on-two fast break. God, we were drilled as young players. you got to get a layup. Now guys spot up and fire, and there's not even a second thought. I mean, I don't ever see a coach yell, that's a bad shot if it's the right guy shooting it. It's an amazing weapon. It's, it's, uh, it's one that we use offensively, and it's one that we worry about defensively. Certainly yesterday was an example of that. How can we limit guys, you know, of, of making threes against? Our three-point line defense is something we talk about, and it's been probably our best this year. That's why it's helped us. Another unrelated question that, uh, you know, you have a, a – a very solid fan in the governor of New Jersey. Where does that go back from? Delaware. He's a Delaware grad. Chris Christie's a Delaware grad. And when I got the job, he was just an attorney and came down, big hoops guy, and was real supportive of my program. Um, now his daughter is at ND and is a manager for us. So we have just, we were great friends when I was in Newark, Delaware, and, and, and he was a hoops fan lawyer from New Jersey. And um, he knows more about my team than some of my staff. The guy's unbelievable plugged into our stuff. So love having him around. We'll go uh, Mike, here and then we'll go all the way in the back. Mike, Josh Verlin from City of Basketball Love. Uh, Steve and VJ both gave you a lot of credit for saying they were both kind of soft-spoken kids and their freshman and sophomore year. They said you were really instrumental in helping them open up. I was just wondering if you could you know, talk about what you saw from them from that standpoint when they were young and, and, and how they've kind of matured in that. Yeah, they were really quiet guys and we had good vocal old guys when they were young. And I think what's helped them too is seeing some of the older guys that have come before them. They saw Jaron Grant and Pat Connaughton lead one heck of a team two years ago. That's the best example ever. Nothing I can tell them is going to get them, you know, more ready to lead than seeing that. And then they saw Demetrius Jackson and Zach August do a job that maybe I didn't expect they could do and being vocal and verbal. So they have come out of their shell, and um, you add Bonzi and Matt Farrell to that, and it's been kind of a nice chemistry of voices leading our team. Coach, we're going to go all the way in the back. Mike, Jeff Coyle with West Virginia Illustrated. Uh, we've made a lot all season long about the idea of a quick turnaround, getting prepared for the Mountaineers and that pressure defense. What has it been like for you guys from the scout with your assistants to now, you know, this 48 hours leading up to tip off to face a bit of an unorthodox style? Yeah, I, I think we've, you know, tried to compare them to Florida State, which we played three times, playing 11, 12 guys, getting up, getting India. The game in Tallahassee, we lost. We turned it over 18 times. We did not take care of the basketball the other two times we did. So we try to make a comparison there and get back to that kind of prep. You know, I don't want to overcoach it. You know, we have press offense that you work on back in October, and 
you don't want to overanalyze it too much. We need guys to be receivers. Um, I, I think we can prepare in a day. I've got really pretty sharp guys and, and high basketball IQ guys. So um, I think our thing is, you know, when we when we get through it, are we are we looking to attack? Are we looking to run offense? And then we have to change defenses on them. We can't play man to man the whole game. We got to make them play against something different to kind of maybe change your rhythm, since they change your rhythm with full court pressure. And speaking of the rhythm, uh, they say they want to speed up opposing teams. Is that a mental thing, a physical thing? How do you keep your guys from getting caught up in that? Yeah, we're we're not the fastest. You know, if you look at our pace, you know, we we have been kind of a situational running team. I think what we do is, is we, we've done, gotten to uh, do a good job when we don't have numbers in transition, we kind of back that thing out and make you guard us for a while. And we're gonna have to be disciplined with that. Now that's easier said than done because they're really good in the half court too. They're face guarding you, they may just run and trap you there. And so finding the rhythm of this game, I think is gonna be a feeling out process for us tomorrow in the first half. Yep. Down front, Mark. Are, are you going to sleep easier tonight because you got Matt? I mean, because, like, you know, if you got an inexperienced point guard, they'll yeah. just chew that guy into mush, you know? Yeah, no, there's no question, Matt. But, you know, Steve Astoria, TJ Gibbs, Rex Fluger, our big guys, you know, Bonzi could bring the ball up a little bit. You know, we, we don't turn the ball over much. You know, it's a team that doesn't turn the ball over. I think we're first or second or third in the nation against a team that, turns people over, you know, so something's got to give. We're going to kick it around a little bit more than usual, but we have to be great with it tomorrow overall to win. Go ahead, John. Mike, and this is a, almost a follow-up on Matt. And I, I think you may have raised at least some eyebrows here in comparing Matt to, to, yeah. to, to Bobby yesterday, but or two days ago, I'm sorry. What gives you that confidence that he is that type of a player and what do you make of the adjustment that he's made in going from where he was a year ago to where he is now? You know, my comparison is skill set, not honors. Skill set, period. And, and I think uh, um, the, his ability to play fearlessly and make plays off the ball screen, which he's had to do all year, um, and then the ability, his ability to score and make shots makes him – unbelievably valuable to us you know he he shoots it and he shoots it deep he can make the runner in the lane he can get to the hole with his speed and get fouled he's pretty much automatic from the foul line um, you know so that that was that's that's why I made the comparison but also that's why he that's why we're got a chance to get to the second weekend you know we lose Grant and Jackson two guards to the NBA the big question mark was who's going to handle the ball for us. And for him to do what he's done, I mean, it's, it's just a great story, really a neat story. And glad he's coming back for another year, <laughs> I think. <laughs> Got time for two more. We'll start over here on the uh, far side here. Chris McKee, Sportsnet Canada. Obviously, last night being a high point of the season for you guys. Um, can you look back and think, you know, the lowest point of the season for you and your team and what you guys did to kind of fight through that? Yeah, we lost five out of six in the ACC, and the fifth was at North Carolina. Remember that game that was postponed because the water in Chapel Hill was so – all our – everything was screwed up. And we played great. We made a comeback, lost to Carolina there. That was five out of six, and we were six and five in the league coming home to play Wake Forest. And we had to kind of make our stand against Wake. And we did. We played very nervous in the first half because we knew how much was on the line to get going again. Then we beat Florida State on that Saturday, and we've been on a pretty good run ever since. But again, when you have maturity and older guys and their demeanors kind of like that, you can handle five out of six without panic. Any other questions for Coach? Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Hey, 224 West Virginia student athletes.